This report provides us with a wealth of evidence-based information on Europe's ever-shifting drug situation. Although, as we saw last year, there are some encouraging signs that, in some parts of Europe, the use of the more traditional drugs, such as heroin and cocaine, appears to be waning, this year's report does leave me with some serious worries. In the past years, there has been an increase in the number and availability of new psychoactive substances appearing in the market. Our early warning system currently monitors over 350 substances, of which synthetic cannabinoid receptor agonists are the largest group. These substances mimic the effects of cannabis. We identified 651 websites where new psychoactive substances are being sold as legal highs, research chemicals or food supplements to Europeans. This continues to be a challenge for law enforcement. So far in 2014, four new psychoactive substances have been risk assessed after serious harms were reported to us. A potent hallucinogen that has been sold as LSD, an opioid that has similar effects to morphine, a dissociative that was sold as a replacement to the anaesthetic ketamine, and a synthetic cathinone, which is a potent stimulant. The high potency of some new synthetic drugs is a worrying development. In particular, some new synthetic opioids are active at very low levels and you only need small quantities to make thousands of doses. Adding to this, it's also more difficult to detect them in the blood of patients who end up in hospital or die because they are present at very low concentrations. A number of our data sets show a decline for heroin, at least in the medium term. If we look at seizures, the number of seizures has dropped since around 2009. The quantity of heroin seized in the EU, which was around five tonnes in 2012, is the lowest for a decade. We see recent declines in the number of heroin-related drug law offences and there's evidence of a decline in new recruitment into heroin use in Europe. We see this in the treatment data, where overall, the number of new entrants for heroin problems almost halved in the last five years. Opioids, other than heroin, are of increasing concern. In 2012, in the majority of European countries, more than 10% of first-time opioid clients entering specialised drug treatment were misusing opioids other than heroin. Those substances include potent fentanyl and the substances prescribed in opioid substitution treatments such as methadone or buprenorphine, which are in this case misused. Overall, around 6,100 overdose deaths, mainly related to opioids, have been reported in Europe in 2012. This is a considerable decline compared with the 7,500 deaths reported in 2008. Progress may be in partial attributed to the increased number of treatment and harm reduction interventions, but these positive developments are fragile and may be vulnerable to country-specific threats. Opioid users represent the largest group undergoing drug treatment. An estimated 735,000 clients are in substitution treatment in Europe. Methadone is the most commonly prescribed substance, with about two-thirds of this group receiving this medication. Survey data illustrates the geographical differences in stimulant use in Europe. Cocaine prevalence levels are highest in the south and west of Europe, amphetamines in central and northern Europe, whereas ecstasy, though at very low levels, in the south and east of Europe. Data from a wastewater study carried out in a Europe-wide multi-city study also confirms regional patterns of use. High amphetamine levels were found in wastewater samples in some cities in the north and northwest of Europe, while high methamphetamine levels were found in cities in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Cocaine remains the most frequently reported stimulant used in Europe. However, we see declines in some indicators. Seizures of cocaine, first-time entrance to treatment, 
and prevalence levels among some of the countries with traditionally high levels of prevalence. Methamphetamine use is still less prevalent in Europe than amphetamine use. However, there are worrying reports occurring in Southeast Europe that crystal methamphetamine smoking, although limited, is an emerging problem with the possibility of um, a spread among particularly vulnerable populations. Between 2007 and 2012, trends in ecstasy use have been stable or declining. However, more recently, we have seen the re-emergence of ecstasy tablets with high levels of MDMA, which is a concern. In recent years, Europe's stimulants market has been further complicated by the emergence of synthetic catenones. The injection of these drugs among groups of high-risk users, for example in Hungary or Romania, is causing new challenges for services. Prevalence of cannabis use varies considerably between countries, with rates of last year use amongst young adults ranging from between 4 and 20%. However, amongst some of the largest countries in Europe, rates have been stable or declining since 2003. Public health concerns are greatest for the around 1% of European adults that use cannabis on a daily or almost daily basis. In some of the countries with the higher prevalence estimates, cannabis-related emergencies appear to be a growing concern. Cannabis-related emergencies occur mainly among young males and often in combination with alcohol intoxications. Cannabis accounts for over 80% of all illicit drug seizures in Europe in 2012. There are recent concerns about high-potency cannabis. Indeed, there have been innovations in cannabis production and now growers cultivate plants which are high in THC, the active ingredient in cannabis uh, causing the high, but low in CBD, which is a protective antipsychotic. While the potency of cannabis has risen since 2006, we have seen very sharp rises in cannabis resin potency between 2011 and 2012, with some samples containing up to 60% THC. In European cities, the drug problem is no longer as visible as it was a few years ago, and this is largely due to the investments made by our member states in treatment programs and harm reduction services. However, the European drug problem has not been solved. It is still very much with us, and it is evolving constantly. Also, the drugs themselves, as well as their consumption patterns and production and trafficking systems, are in many ways different from the ones we know from the past, and we are working very hard to follow these developments and their implications for public health and for drug control. The good thing is that over the years, Europe's response to drug problems has become more and more effective because it is based on sound information, and sound information is the job of the EMCDDA. It is imperative that this information feeds into the development of effective responses in the areas of law enforcement, prevention and treatment. This should ensure that European authorities keep pace with the evolving challenges we face.